Hello and welcome back to the finals of the Air Things Masters and what a cracking finale of day one we had yesterday. Uh, it was a very, very intense fight between two good friends, but currently their countries are facing some kind of a turmoil that ended last month. That is Azerbaijan and Armenia. So Levan Aronian is like a superstar. He gets like recognized in the streets of Armenia, whereas Temur Radyabov, the World Cup winner, and also had some kind of a controversy as he dropped out of the candidates earlier this year and the tournament also got postponed so plenty of talking points plenty of controversies but in the end what an absolute day of chess and we had so many exciting moments so many decisive games in the third fourth match between mvl and daniel dubov as well we will be having a look at that as well very quickly and uh We'll start with the finals, guys. The finals were, are between Aronian and Radyabov. Remember, Carlson has exited in the quarterfinals. Nakamura also out earlier. So, let's get down and enjoy this uh, final match. So, in round two of the finals where Aronian was playing white, in, in around this position, uh, Raja goes a little astray with pawn to f4. And in this position... Aronian has a chance to grab the initiative and he does so with e5. Remember, just destroying the pawn chain here and after d5, he goes for the hasty queen c5 here, guys. Instead, a move like knight b3 and the point being that I'll capture on c5 with the knight and the knight then attacks this and it is very, very possible that Aronian could have converted this. Instead, he, he captures it with the Queen and now the point is black won't be taking on c5 will not allow this knight coming to c5 and you can never take because once the pawn captures the c5 square is defended and the knight can't go there and Aronian tried a little bit still he has the advantage but it would have been much better if the knight would have ended up on c5 and here uh, we will come to a very interesting position you see white is now two pawns up but sadly now once after rook c8 the knight can't, can't come back is and is kind of stuck and after the knight comes to b4 still see he has no really squares or no really options and even though white is two pawns up it is raja who plays attacking chess and closes out the position and kind of forces a drawer and it is you can see even uh, even the bar has dropped down and aronian was in the end happy to take the draw just this was point that's where rook d8 happened and after a3 we see a repetition here which is very very unnatural never seen before like white is two pawns up but still all his pieces are stuck this knight on e3 is a beast and this is a very important draw for raja as he manages to you know kind of save a point and then also head into the final like the final game so round one was draw this is round two round three was again a draw and in round four Temur Radyabov coming up with the goods in the Berlin defense and uh, he tr he tried the so uh, super solid Berlin but uh, in fact it got him a result as well so in this position after knight to d4 Lev had to go for you know more attacking more enterprising e6 here instead he goes for king to f2 which is a mistake sadly as uh, now all of white's pieces are kind of forced back and he loses a pawn here and white is uh, you know almost two pawns down you can see four versus two on the queen side whereas he is a pawn up on the king's side here and rook c1 knight b4 now very interesting moment here like uh, lev had to be aggressive had to just go for more uh, chances here he has to maybe some open up some lines but he opens up the wrong set of squares here and 95 okay 97 93 knight to c6 and here he still had to maybe some go for h4 g5 expansion or maybe e6 somewhere but instead he goes for f6 here which is already a question mark because you see this bishop has no really prospects but after f6 now the down this bishop can come to this diagonal come to the center also maybe and this is where the game turned as you can see the drop bar has also dropped down and yes uh, raja does that and aronian still tries to do, do some complications but it's sadly never enough and that one point advantage is still enough and you see these two pieces haven't been even 
uh, touched or still on their birth squares, but still uh, after the trades that we'll see, it's enough uh, to win the game. And smooth conversion here again. Bishop makes its first move, just captures. Now this pawn is will be have to always be defended by the bishop. And yeah, this C pawn will be making all the difference here, guys. And yes, a little bit of maneuvering by Raja and now he already captures on e6. Now one of these two pawns falls. The bishop is too strong and Aronian losing the last game of the day. It's quite a cruel format and he also loses the whole set. So remember tomorrow, if uh, Raja just needs like two all, like, uh, he just needs to score two points to win the Air Things Masters and what it would quite... It would be an emphatic victory for Azerbaijan over Armenia in the geopolitical scheme of things as well. But hey, it's always nice to have some fight over the board rather than on land. And it is with this, we will quickly jump into uh, our other two matches of... Uh, our other match, rather, of the finals of the Airthink Masters that is between MVL and Daniel Dubov. And what a match this was, guys. Four games, all four of them were decisive. It really blows my mind that how can one's match have so much action? These two players, remember, are extremely, extremely fun and super, super dynamic players. And we'll jump into the action right from this moment around. You can see Dubov has kept his king uh, to H8. He just wants to open some lines. He wants to attack somewhere. And boy, is he successful. Queen b3 already, white is attacking this pawn once and this pawn once. And uh, it feels as if uh, Dubov has to do something drastic and he simply does that. He goes to d4 first, attacking this bishop. Bishop goes back, knight to c5, protects the pawn, attacks the queen, double threat. Queen to c2 and here he goes. Dubov, known for his fireworks, he beat Carlsen as well on route to the uh, this th semi-final or the third, fourth place spot. And he goes, bam, rook f3, guys. Gf3, the point being, now this king is super under threat. And even though it's not like a completely attacking idea, it is just to point out the fact that all these pawns are going to be weak. And these rooks of white are going to be sitting ducks throughout and that is what happens as we see and again look at this a rook should like belong to an open file not on g2 next to a king like a pawn and uh, dubov takes his time slowly gets a pawn now they trade it into an end game again dubov picks up another pawn here and look at this look at these pawns and the, the best example or the lesson that we learned earlier is past pawn should be pushed, is employed by Dubov. And he just simply uh, safeguards everything on the king side and he just goes. And he just goes on the queen side. Yeah, this check was threatened, so he just blocks that. And now this pawn will start running because white can't create anything on the king side. This king is extremely safe. Whereas this king is slightly in the open, but who's going to stop this pawn? And there we go. Just push, push. Keep pushing it and just trade queens. The point being after takes, takes. I can just go here and queen. And there is no way for uh, white to defend. And MVL throws in the towel, resigns game one. And the next moment is game two, where Dubov playing white creates an absolute mess uh, after in the middle game. And he just, you see, you can look at his pieces. Look at his pieces go white. Black's king is still in the center. This knight is ready. Whoops. Ready to attack here. Ready to attack here. Queen can come in. And Dubov just simply loves these positions and not allowing to castle. And now he, he gets he, he gets what he is famous for. He likes his king, opponent's king in the open. And now once he gets a pawn, he's very smartly being a universal player. Just comes back and just solidifies it. And just converts a really, really nice game. Slow and steady wins the race. And Dubov just does absolutely that he is already one pawn up and he just keeps that advantage continues that advantage throughout and now he just after king c8 it's a blunder this pawn is gone with check and now this pawn will be the star just nice idea h4 just making some extra square for your king and queen d7 now d6 is threatened bishop f4 is threatened it's impossible for mvl to do in anything and 
he resigns here note that mvl is uh, trailing 2-0 so dubov just needs one draw to uh, take the first set and get go into the lead into tomorrow's uh, day 2 but mvl does not allow dubov uh, it uh, the lead so easily in this position it's quite equal you can see when the bar is at the uh, like in the medium level and it is here that dubov goes wrong with rookie 6 remember mvl has to try to has to win both the games of this to uh, draw the match but after rookie 6 he's presented with an opportunity because this pawn is going to be a queen and uh, this rook is kind of stuck you will see this rook hasn't moved for the entirety i'll put the link of all these matches in the description as well so that you can also go through them easily and this rook uh, this is like around move 27 and that rook on it does not move till like the very end of the game so it just trades queen and remember this rook is quite active but it also stops the pawn and it does a very nice job and just the point that white will bring his king now and that will be enough to win and that is what he does very smartly just gets the king here and it is just impossible for uh, white to trouble this rook at all and you see so much action happening here but white is super super done and it is now move number 30 at black has moved his rook for the first time and dubov simply pays the price this piece is out of the game it is like you can see cannot come anywhere except this uh and cannot come to these uh this file as well this bishop just attacking this but the rook is already defending that and this rook has to stop that pawn and finally that passed pawn decides the day with a6 bishop f2 a7 if you capture i just go here now there's no way to stop this pawn queening you get back the queen but now why it is an exchange up and just squeeze of the king and now this check is going to be game over and that is what happens and mvl gets the win so now it's 2-1 to dubov and mvl has to win again uh, to make it 2-2 and make sure that this set is drawn and he does that in very nice style here in this game mvl is playing a black pieces and dubov going against his style like he is a very attacking player and the knight of gives him great att attacking chances but he goes for a rather a central attack a rosolimo kind of setup and he just wants to get pieces off the board quickly and he gets a pawn is uh, mvl gives uh, gets a pawn in the opening and he is happy to do that because he wants to create those complications and uh, dubov now he's a pawn down maybe he can see still has composition because look at mvl species here and instead dubov opens up the b file and is ready to fight and it was i think it wasn't needed like he didn't have to play this sharp especially after his opening choice but somehow his instinct might have got the better of him and he was still in a better position guys and around this this point mvl is just welcoming the challenge even rook a king d7 everything is seen and it is you can see the bar is also totally down why it is absolutely winning why it just had to find this but after knight e3 i think dubov is simply winning because again as i said look at these three pieces never even touched once and we are already on a move 20 and uh, instead dubov plays queen f3 and slowly his advantage starts evaporating guys because he loses a piece here and now he's a piece down and after this point being he gets back his exchange but as you remember in the game in the game where rubov played rook into s3 the the pawns here will decide the game and uh, white's queen is like a paper tiger just doesn't have any targets now and uh, mbl is very happy to trade queens because then you, you know the, this cluster of pawns is going to decide the day in the end and just mvl starts pushing the pawns remember past pawns should be pushed in the game see and also this square is guarded already so he's very happy to trade queens again queen can't really go back and mvl is glad to see dubov trade queens and yeah yes you pick up a pawn because if i capture and now white is winning again but remember i just play king d8 now even my bishop is in the game 
and uh, it's, it's still on the edge but dubov is uh, should have defended this and your rook c1 is a very difficult move to make from white side and with time pressure trickling and he plays f3 and now this pawn is going to be very very active and yes after 94 is simply a blunder because you have to capture with the pawn and now black just gets this in and the king and pawn end game is totally winning remember you have to play this after, otherwise after bishop c1 this is just a queen and rook b1 bishop c1 you can't capture anything as they protect each other and this king will simply outmaneuver white's king and mvl is glad to enter day two on an equal slate unlike aronian so yes a simple conversion here and this pawn is going to be a new queen here and black is totally winning so what an exciting day in the end dubo versus mvl is 2-2 Whereas Aronian versus Rajabo is where Rajabo leads 2.5, 1.5. So Raja is happy with a draw for day two. Whereas it's everything to play for between uh, Dubov and MVL. And I'll be back for tomorrow with the day two and the last recap for Air Things Masters. And I'll see you there.